Hey everyone, it's Katie and Mike. Say hi, Mike. Hello, everybody. As you can tell, we are not in our car. What could we possibly be doing we're, not in our car? Well, we're sitting comfortably here. Yeah, because it is cold outside. Um, it is, I don't know, negative something or other degrees. Negative here. something with wind chill. Yeah, it's terrible outside uh, because the snow finally came. So, uh... We decided uh, that we're going to be doing a little special project for the next few weeks because Agent Carter is finally, finally on our television screens. Yes, the Agent Carter Marvel MCU TV special. Yay! So um, it's going to be, I think it's eight episodes, right? But it's, it, they did two of them on the first night. Yeah. They did a special two-hour event, which was so... It, that spoiled us, because I'm like, well, now I have to wait a whole other... Like, you gave me two hours of content. Well, technically, like, all right, maybe more like 80, 80 minutes of content. And now I have to wait a whole week and to see the rest of this, uh, the next episode of the show. Um, but we, I thought that we do, uh, episodes, little reviews, talk yeah, little, about... Yeah, little quick little recaps, talk about the episodes, and move on. Move on. Move on! Yeah. Um, this one's a little rough because it is two episodes, and there's a lot that, um, that went through. We're not gonna go through all of it, we're just more gonna talk about our general feelings on it. Uh, trying to trying to cover most of the stuff, most of the big stuff that happened. Um, but it is going to be spoilery, so just assume going into these videos that they're going to spoil some things because we're not going to break it up. Yeah, we're not going to be holding ourselves back with ideas. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about they won't episode probably, one. We'll talk a little bit about episode one with this one. Uh, trying to split up uh, between, because they went right into the next episode with uh, this last one. So, um, yeah, I, uh, let's just get started. So, first episode. First episode! Um, I think, I don't think we have to necessarily say, like, what went, you what know, happened. what happened necessarily. Uh, but I really, I liked, uh, Basically, I, I just really love Peggy Carter, and, um, you know, I know the person who plays her, it's just not off the top of my... Haley Atwell. I follow her on Twitter, and I've been talking about how great she was. Like, I've typed her name quite a few times today, talking about how great her character portrayal was last night. I don't know why I couldn't remember it. Uh, but Haley Atwell really does carry the show. Now, the writing's really good. And they're writing her really well, but yeah. the fact is, is that if she wasn't, if she didn't nail this character down, then uh, this, this would be a weaker show. This would be a way weaker show. If they had another actress in this. They really did cast so well, getting her as Peggy Carter, and she does such a good job. Um, and I think the fact is, is that they respect the character a lot. They uh, they show her post. Uh, post the first uh, Captain America movie, the war is over. She's working for the what's the organization SSR. called? SSR. That was a real organization, Str or was it? Strategic something. Strategic scientific. Was that resources? a Marvel thing? Yeah, it's, a, it's okay. a Marvel thing. So I, mean, sure, what SSR I know that for. there were actual organizations like that. Um. In some form, but in real life, I don't think SSR was. No. That well, I know that it wasn't a real thing, but I'm I mean, saying that... Organizations like it existed, yes. That's what I'm saying. Um, because I was just reading an article, actually, on the Mary Sue, which I did not write, but I read, um, that was talking about the real women that actually inspired Pe inspired the character of Peggy Carter. Uh, because they existed, and they were awesome. Um, so she's not very fulfilled in her job. I mean, she's doing some work, but it's, a lot of them are treating her like a secretary. Uh, they're making... Ha a lot of her male colleagues, who are all, they're all men, um, are telling her that, um, or like making little remarks about how she was basically, like, screwing Captain America. That's why she got her job. And that's why she got her job. 
Um, already, I really like the one decent human being that she works with, whose name uh, in the show is Daniel Sosa, and his and his actors the perform the actor's name is Enverge. I can't speak. I'm sorry. It's an Eastern European name. It has two J's in it. I don't even see his name on the list. Right here. Oh. I have my computer right in front of me. And I would go Jacques. Yeah. But, uh, well, I'm probably going to get people like Whedonverse Pe- fans met because he was in Dollhouse. So peop- those guys probably know how to pronounce his name already. Um, I best know him as the uh, Eastern European guy that was that dated Britta for one episode of Community, and then she realized that he was that he was actually a war criminal, and she got very, and it was like, no matter how handsome he is, I'm not going to be dating that. So no, he's a very, he's actually a very nice uh, person who respects Peggy, and also happens to be quite handsome. So like, of all the male characters so far, um, he's the one that I'm most okay with her having a love interest with. However, if it doesn't happen, I'm also okay with that, because I like them as friends. Um... But there was... Oh, also... I, well, what are you going to say? I think another thing we should point out with this is that this office is very similar to what we saw in the Peggy Carter short. But not the same. Not the same office. And, and, and there's I, not a... We're not 100% sure if, um... If the, uh... Sorry, I'm so tired. I think it's been said before that they're going to retcon the short. I think yeah. I read that in the article. Which is a shame because the short's so good. I was hoping that they could keep it in to keep that continuity. Yeah. Um, and I don't like them when things get out of continuity like that. But at the same time, they're doing so good with the show that I don't mind it because it's, they're still giving us good stuff. Um, and I also like the fact that uh, Daniel Sosa, the, eight, the agent that's actually kind of, not necessarily her friend, but someone that she's friendly with and that respects her, um, he's also a war veteran who lost his leg in the war. Uh, So that's actual uh, representation for people with disabilities. And as um, someone mentioned on Twitter, that they really hoped they didn't alien or magic away his disability sometime in the show. Yeah, especially because he seems to be like, he's not like angsty about it. Like obviously it's, he gets, um, he actually gets, harass a bit at work for it, and, um, and he's not, like, happy about it, but at the same point, like, he has an attitude of, like, this is what it is, and I actually kind of like that. Like, his whole character arc isn't going to necessarily be about his injury. Uh, besides that, so, the, you know, the plot of it is that, that good old Howard Stark, uh, has some weapons that, that mysteriously disappeared, and Peggy's trying to f- find them. Yeah, apparently Howard had a secret, secret sub basement where he kept all his personal. It's like, why were you cre- if if they were dangerous and you didn't want them to fall in the hands? Why are you? Because I have to. I'm a creator. And it's like no, ch- chill. Well, how about you build them and then disassemble them? Well, You're gonna, like this well, is no too. One... This is too problematic to keep in any person's hands. Let's just like you totally understand where Tony gets this stupid manic. Ness. So, um, yeah. Yeah, apparently Tony doesn't learn from his father. Yeah. Well, doesn't learn from his father's mistakes. He clearly learns from his father. Um, and so he's going under, or he's, like, leaving town, but he's like, you gotta help me, you gotta save my reputation. There's, like, eight, there's eight inventions, you gotta find them. I don't know, even though I did read an article that apparently, you know, if you think it's going to be a... A, an One invention eight. of oh. the week, it's not going to be necessarily. Yeah, because we just had two episodes and it was the same uh, paper but, formula. But apparently, like, things I'm are... I'm guessing we're going to probably have episodes where they find three, or this is where two are stored. Apparently, or, though, some, like, she... Or ba- maybe even some of them All I found. know is that Haley Atwell had basically said in an interview, if you think you know what's coming, you really, really don't. Like, you think, you think that they've... That they're setting up, like certain things they're they're doing some different stuff i don't and i know that might be her just like promoting the show but i'm i'm hoping that maybe they do some twists and turns that are unexpected and not so tropey um so back to this episode uh we also get introduced to james 
GRC. There's an apostrophe between the D and the A in his name, but that's the actor. And he plays Edwin Jarvis, who, if you didn't know, is the guy that Tony based the robot on. Because he was he like, hmm. the AI. The AI. He becomes a robot, okay? I'm not completely wrong. I know what happens in Age of Ultron. Partially. <laughs> Mostly. Kind of. Vaguely. Um, but he's actually really charming, and they're clearly, there's a platonic friendship that's, and a bond between the two of them. Yeah, they work really well together. They really do, and he's very dom domestic, and I know that there were people who were, were hypothesizing that the wife doesn't actually exist. But I think we heard her say a line. That's what, we, uh, we just rewatched the episode. Yeah, also they call, he called her Donna, and I think he called her Donna. But, um, yeah, and that's what other people said, like, oh, I'm pretty sure I heard a voice. And they're like, well, it could have been Stark just, like, doing a really high voice. Maybe Stark, maybe they're actually lovers. And it's like, well, how does Tony get made? There are ways to, get, there are ways to impregnate women that doesn't involve heterosexual sex, okay? That was this whole, like, this whole, uh, common thread I saw. And I was like, you know what, you guys, maybe. I'm not, MCU's done weirder stuff. But um, he's very domestic, and so when Peggy's calling, and he's like, "Well, I'm I'm making a souffle for my wife." No, the one of the best lines was, "I'm going. I have need of you after 9 p.m." Because he goes, "Well, I, my wife and I go to bed." So yeah, she goes, "I have what, after 9 p.m. I will have need of you." So does my wife, and then he hangs up the phone, and then it's the implications of that, even though he's a very stiff upper stiff upper lip sort of guy and obviously didn't mean that, but it's pretty funny. Um, uh, besides, I hope that wasn't in the second one. Oh well. Um, in this first one, I mean, the big thing that happened is that the roommate, um, the very sweet uh, roommate who just want, who wants to encourage Peggy to go out there and find a nice man because she deserves to be happy, she gets killed. Um, yeah. I get where they were going with it. They're clearly setting up some parallels between her and Steve, where she put her roommate in danger. Um, I think it was Colleen. I think her name was Colleen. But she put Colleen in danger, and now she's afraid of getting close to other people, especially people outside of, of the job because they can get hurt, especially now that she's doing these just in the same way Field that work. just in the same way that um that Steve oh excuse me that Steve uh, felt guilty about Bucky and then doesn't want to get close to people in Winter Soldier. Like there's some there are some definite parallels there. So I get that. And I thought that they did a good job of her kind of then pushing through faster than Steve did, where she kind of realizes after Jarvis like, tells her, no, you should connect with people. That's how you'll remember what you're doing this all for. She ends up, um, shit, that was from the second part, isn't it? Yeah, that's from the second episode. Should we talk about that later, then, or? Yeah, we'll talk about it later. The okay. first episode stuff. Ooh, all right, first episode stuff. Okay, so it ends, I'm trying to remember where it ends so we can talk about that. Um, it ends with, uh, her taking a fork to the guy from Super Trooper's side, and then forcing him to never go into her fr into her friend's diner again. Yeah, they're using this diner thing as sort of a... One of the set pieces. Yeah. And she has a diner friend. She has a diner friend um, who's uh, Lindsay Fonseca. Fonseca, I'm sorry. I'm the worst at pronouncing every single actor's name. Um, but she was really sweet, and I, like, and I like her, and she's very spunky. Yeah. If there's one thing I would criticize this episode for is that it's kind of cliche and the lines are sort of like I don't mind it that much. It's not bad. It, it reads like someone said and I ended up watching this movie right afterwards because I saw it on Netflix and was inspired but someone said like it's very it's very His Girl Friday mm -hmm. in the old 40s style 30s 40s style kind of movie um, very Cary Grant sort of dialogue um, but then again, we're setting everything up, so I mean... That gonna, too. That, that's what and, kind of... And I know that there are people, there are people who are like, the sexism is too, isn't subtle enough. And I'm like, what do you want? 
God, it's the it's the forties. I know. It's like, oh, is Mad Men too, too? That's what I said. But even more than that, like then what? again, I w I will say Mad Men is on AMC and they can get probably get away with more. And then this is on ABC, which is a national broadcast network, which means they probably get away with less. Well, and, and probably the, and the other thing is, is that it. like a lot of times with sh with shows that are trying to be feminist, they have the woman deal with sexism once. To show the sexism exists, and then she maybe not overcomes it, but like you know, punches him in the face once, and then walks away, and then or it's has never. A nip, snippy retort. Yeah, exactly. This she has plenty of snippy retort. She punches so many people, so many people, and she still has to deal with it. Like it, it doesn't go away. And I will say, I think it did. It go away in the second episode. I don't. I don't know if I remember it. Yes. There. No. No. It didn't the, go away. I mean, okay. yes, it, it continued. Okay. You watched it more than me. Yeah, I mean, like, the the men were more busy with stuff, so they didn't have as much, as much, like, to do, but it was still, it was still pretty... Yeah, I was just double-checking. Yeah, no, I have I've a feeling they're going to be giving her shit throughout this entire thing. Which is com comforting. I have a feeling it's going to end, it, I, I'm guessing... This is my guess, and I don't think it's that big of a guess, but that it is going to end with the very last episode where she's about to get in trouble. Like, she could arguably get deported or get, you know, sentenced as tr a traitor or something, and, but then it comes in and she's a big hero because she helped save the day with Stark, and then Stark's like, oh yeah, you should probably pack up. And she's like, what? Why? No. And it's like, oh yeah, um, I'm... I'm dismantling SSR. Yeah. We're dismantling SSR, and um, we need a new name. So can you help me come up with a name for that for that uh, that organization you're going to be running? Okay, thanks. What I think is going to happen, because I was thinking about this, because, um, yeah, in the short, Stark mentions, like, oh... Already S.H.I.E.L.D. by name. Yeah, S.H.I.E.L.D. by name. But people have said, what if Peggy's the one to actually name S.H.I.E.L.D., and she names it after... Basically, after Rogers, it would be great if he if they named it Shield like as a protection, and then starts like, great, now I gotta figure out an an acronym to put it with this. Well, Peggy could figure out the acronym. You know, because and then then you get the line with start going. That spells Shield. Oh, does it? Yeah, we could do that too. Um, the other fun thing about the first episode, which does play into the second one, but we'll get to it. Um, and then I think we can go on to the next one. Yeah. Um, is her use of costume. Because she ends up uh, she ends up going to this like hot nightclub and she's dressed as a blonde, which is really a good thing because now the rest the men are like, We gotta look for this blonde. Hey Peggy, do you know any blonde women about your height? Maybe your va your vague shape from the back? But definitely blonde. Sorry. To be honest, I was a little bit fooled at first with... Because she looks like a different shape in that dress. Uh, Alright, I had seen I had seen the previews, though, that used, that had her in that, so I guess I wasn't fooled, but I do find it funny. You're like, well, oh my Well, I figured goodness. it out in seconds, <laughs> but I mean, like, I was like, who's this character? And I was like, oh, wait, oh, that's Peggy. Okay. Uh, but I really liked her American accent. She does a good American accent in this. Uh, a couple times, actually. But this was the first bit, and I really like it. Someone said it's very aliasy, like the, sh the old show, because it's all the wigs. Um, it was, but it was um, a really fun first episode, but really, you know, it's only half of... It feels like half the pilot. Yeah. Really. Um, it feels... These the second two, episode is much stronger. I agree, but uh, part of that is because it got to... It gets to the conclusion. Well, and it's it was already set up, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Um, so with that, let's go to the second episode. A lot of her male colleagues, who are all they're all men, um, are telling her that, um, or like making little remarks about how she was basically like screwing Captain America. That's why she got her job. And that's why she got her job. Um, already, I really like the one 
decent human being that she works with, whose name uh, in the show is Daniel Sosa, and his and his actors the perform the actor's name is Enverge. I can't speak. I'm sorry. It's an Eastern European name. It has two J's in it. I don't even see his name on the list. Right here. Oh. I have my computer right in front of me. And I would go Jacques. Yeah. But, uh, well, I'm probably going to get people like Whedonverse Pe- fans met because he was in Dollhouse. So peop- those guys probably know how to pronounce his name already. Um, I best know him as the uh, Eastern European guy that was that dated Britta for one episode of Community, and then she reeled up. Um, and I think the fact is is that they respect the character a lot. They uh, they show her post uh, post the first uh, Captain America movie. The war's over. She's working for the what's the organization SSR. called? SSR. That was a real organization, Str- or was it? Strategic something. Strategic scientific. Was that a resources? Marvel thing? Yeah, it's a, it's okay. a Marvel thing. So I, sure, what SSR I know that for. there were actual organizations like that. Um, in some form, but in real life, I don't think SSR was. No, no, it wasn't. That well, wasn't. I know that it wasn't a real thing. But I'm I mean, saying that organizations like it existed. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Um, because I was just reading an article actually on the Mary Sue, which I did not write, but I read. Um, that was talking about the real women that actually inspired Pe- inspired the character of Peggy Carter uh, because they existed and they were awesome. Um, so she's not very fulfilled in her job. I mean, she's doing some work, but it's, a lot of them are treating her like a secretary. Uh, they're making half of content, and now I have to wait a whole week and to see the rest of this uh, the next episode of the show. Um, but we, I thought that we do, uh, episodes, little reviews, talk yeah, little, about... little quick little recaps, talk about the episodes, and move on. Move on. Move on! Yeah. Um, this one's a little rough because it is two episodes, and there's a lot that, um, that went through. We're not gonna go through all of it, we're just more gonna talk about our general feelings on it. Uh, trying to keep, trying to cover most of the stuff, most of the big stuff that happened. Um, but it is going to be spoilery, so just assume going into these videos that they're going to spoil some things because we're not going to break it up. Yeah, we're not going to be holding ourselves back with ideas. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about they won't episode prob- one. We'll talk a little bit about episode one with this one. Uh, trying to split up uh, between, because they went right into the next episode with uh, this last one. So, um, yeah, I, uh, let's just get started. So, first episode. First episode! Um, I think, I don't think we have to necessarily say, like, what went, you what know, happened. what happened necessarily, uh, but I really, I liked, uh, Basically, I, I just really love Peggy Carter, and, um, you know, I know the person who plays her, just not off the top of my Haley Atwell. I follow her on Twitter, and I've been talking about how great she was. Like, I've typed her name quite a few times today, talking about how great her character portrayal was last night. I don't know why I couldn't remember it. Uh, but Haley Atwell really does carry the show. Now, the writing's really good. And they're writing her really well, but yeah. the fact is, is that if she wasn't, if she didn't nail this character down, then uh, this, this would be a weaker show. This would be a way weaker show. If they had another actress in this, they really did cast so well, getting her as Peggy Carter, and she does such a good job. Hey everyone, it's Katie and Mike. Say hi, Mike. Hello, everybody. As you can tell, we are not in our car. What could we possibly be doing? We're, not in our car. Well, we're sitting comfortably here. Yeah. Because it is cold outside. Um, it is, I don't know, negative something or other degrees. Negative or, something with wind chill. Yeah, it's terrible outside uh, because the snow finally came. So uh, we decided uh, that we're going to be doing a little special project for the next few weeks because Agent Carter is finally, finally on our television screens. Yes, the Agent Carter Marvel MCU TV special. 
Yay! So um, it's going to be, I think it's eight episodes, right? But it's, it, they did two of them on the first night. Yeah. They did a special two-hour event, which was so, it, that spoiled us, because I'm like, well, now I have to wait a whole other, like, you gave me two hours of content. Well, technically, like, all right, maybe more like 80, 80 minutes.